So we, we started uh, to heavily rely on Git and GitHub, uh, pull requests, branches. Hope everyone uh, slightly comfortable, uh, start, started to feel at least a little comfortable with these topics. So today we'll um, dedicate the, our entire sessions uh, to details about uh, about git and about github so we need to be more comfortable we need to be more fluent we need to um, have committing creating branches and doing some additional git magic as our i would say second nature and just like we Bathe, just like we walk, just like we eat, uh, we, we should do git commits the uh, same way without even thinking about uh, what is happening and what we are doing and like in, I'd say, in automatic way. And in order to achieve this level of uh, competency, uh, first of all, first thing first, you need to understand what exactly is uh, git you need to understand its uh, first of all internals and uh, to demonstrate this i will uh, do some additional diagramming i will do some drawings so um, a commit will represent uh, will be represented by this by this uh, let's say rather this one looks looks better by this shape Th that will be commit um, so uh, commit perhaps you noticed has a commit message and a commit hash a unique uh, 16 uh, digit uh, hex uh, identifier and our git repository is nothing but a sequence of these commits and what essentially uh, is a commit? Commit is um, a block in our file system that contains two main pieces of information. The first piece of information is uh, what was the previous commit. Each commits in our Git are somewhat related to each other. Uh, they are interconnected. So Git repository is a connected list of our commits. So always, if it's not like very first initial commit, um, commit will have a reference to the previous commit. That's very important to remember. Second thing that it has is that it stores everything it stores information um, about what has changed if we were to compare uh, the the second commit if we were to compare the our commit b with the commit a and so on and so forth each next commit depends on your previous commit and basically till infinity and this relation between uh, b and a is called base commit is based uh, uh, is based on some previous commit on some other commit and what happens when we create a branch so essentially uh, let's imagine we don't yet have uh, we don't have yet have these two commits, right? So when we create a branch, we are switching, uh, I would say, to the um, alternative line, and we are basing this commit based on some commit uh, based on the I would say latest commit from this branch. Yes. And we can we can move we can still move forward. We can add one commit uh, into the second branch, uh, and so on and so forth. 
And at the same time, we can get back, for example, to our main branch and continue committing there. And it is important to, I would say, preserve the chain uh, that um, uh, that we have and always uh, keep track and remember what branch is based on what. And very um, and huge mistake that several um, people done uh, in this course is uh, following. So um, let me scroll down a little. So we created commit A, right? Uh, after that, we uh, uh, created a branch, right? After that, we um, created, created a commit in this branch. And then we merged it uh, back to our initial branch, right? Here it is. But here's which mistake is happening. If we don't switch back over here, if we don't step into here, if we don't run checkout main, what will happen is this commit will be your base. And even though you've merged this into main, when you're sitting on this branch, let's say task one, and trying to create a new branch, it will create something like that. And to be more precise, I will I will highlight explicitly that. Can it be rotated? No. I will highlight more explicitly that at this point here we've merged. And this is something that that we shouldn't have. Instead, after you merged, you should create your commit C from here. Your merged commit, your main, should always be the source of truth. You should base all your commits from your main branch. And that's the reason, extremely important, uh, why um, we always should check out my uh, check out main and why we always should uh, why we always should pull main and create all our branches from main because we always have this relationship to be preserved and all our next branches should be based on the main branch and let me provide some quick example directly from one of our previous pull requests. So here, um, we have one of our repositories and two latest uh, pull requests. So this one is already closed because like I've pointed this out and uh, seems like uh, it was already fixed, but anyways, so we have this pull request. We can always, for example, go and see commits, right? It has two commits, right? And these are two commits that are in this branch called count, but not yet in main. And here is we can uh, uniquely identify this commit. The, the the commit hash is da to d e f a and seven one d one one four b. When we go to this second task, it was created uh, exactly I would say from from this branch. Main was not checked out, and here is what ha what has happened. We have exactly two uh, the same uh, same commits. DA two DA EFA seven one D one one four one B. They are duplicated, but the actual change for for variable task was recorded only in this commit, and this is this is the only commit that we were supposed to see. And let's check. Probably I haven't yet seen this latest pull request, but mm -hmm. yeah. And this one is not correct as well because 
again, uh, what what has happened is that um, this branch was taken variables, and from this variables branch, this pull request was created, and we're still using this variables utilization. And uh, you can go to your uh, branches, and for example, see uh, two numbers. Th th these two numbers: one commit behind, and four commits ahead. What it means? These four commits ahead means exactly that. Let, let me see its pull request. This means we have four commits that are to be merged into main. And one commit behind means main has one commit that was created after this branch was, was created there. So how can we solve these? How can we solve this problem? So the easiest way is to recreate everything, like recreate the branch, copy paste everything, and this is so far what we've been doing. However, there is another uh, option, which is called rebase, and for the rest of the session, I will demonstrate to you how can we use rebase, uh, how can we use interactive rebase, and also probably you've heard about this uh, spooky thing called merge conflict, or perhaps someone already had one in this class. Maybe, maybe yes, maybe not. I will also demonstrate you, to you how can we solve merge conflicts using rebase. Okay, yeah, uh, so there, there was an ask to expand the browser. Yeah, let me, and Visual Studio Code is big enough. And also let me, in Terminal, one second. Yes, I'm sorry for that. Uh, try to keep remembering this. Okay, so a little more theory regarding rebase, how, how it works. Uh, let's say we have uh, uh, our repository our chain of commits. T, um, and let's say D, right? They are all based one on another, right? And let's say we have created at some point of time our, our second branch. and something like that, right? This, uh, what it means? This means, uh, and, le and let's highlight it so it's be more precise. This one is main. This one is, let's say, uh, task one. So um, how many commits uh, task one is ahead of main? It, uh, by how many commits? Uh, it is uh, by uh, by two commits ahead. This means these, and let's have different calls for these. This means B1 is not here, B2 is not here, right? Two commits ahead. And at the same time, it is two commits behind. This means this commit is not here, and this commit is not here. And what is, who can, who can tell me, what uh, is in this context the base branch? What is the base branch of the branch called task one? Uh, yes, uh, whoever, uh, Ramrash, yeah, well, you, can, you can answer this. Yeah, uh, B, B is the base branch. Yeah, no, yes, B is the base commit. 
but base branch is main. Exactly this, I would say, storyline till B. Yes, exactly. And a rebase means that we artificially uh, inter interacting and altering this, this tree and changing the base of our commit, which means Git will go back in time, go back in history, and switch the base of B1 commit from B into the next one, into C. And after that, into the next one, into D, and so on. And how could we solve this problem that I have demonstrated, right? So what commit structure we, we, we had there? So we had two initial commits after, after that, there was a second branch, um, let's call it uh, task two. And uh, one more, one more branch with some other commit as well. And we can call it task task three. So let's say we want to get rid of the salt commits, right? And only have this one, right? Uh, uh, so in um, if we could have done this right from the very beginning, it should have it should look like like this. So there is a latest branch in our the latest commit in our main, and it's the base for this commit, right? But okay, yeah, we have a situation already, right? It, it was done like this. How can we fix that, right? We can again demonstrating what I said previously. We can create one more branch, right? Like this. It's like naive solution. And uh, just, I would say, uh, blindly copy over all files into, into there. Or alternatively, again, as I mentioned, as I demonstrated here, we can rebase. We can take, we, we can take this um, relation and essentially change it. Say like, okay, we already have a commit, but I want this commit to be based not on this one, but instead on, on this one. Like this. And having said that, let me demonstrate this on practice. And before I dive into terminal, can anyone tell me if there are Questions. If something isn't yet clear, maybe something, uh, maybe something else. I need to stress attention to make sure. Uh, I understand this topic is difficult, so to make sure that majority or as many people on this call understand and can and still can follow. Piyush. Yeah, um, I have a question like, uh, do we need to check and confirm that there is a previous commit pending before committing another one? Like, uh, what, what do you mean commit pending? I mean, the, I have uh, changed some files, then um, I have merged it to uh, my uh, task one branch, for example, then I have another changes. What, what, what do you mean merge to your task one branch? You don't I mean, merge anything to your I, task uh, branch. You sorry. only merge from your feature branch into main branch through pull request. Yeah, yeah sorry, not uh, merge, it's a push. Mm -hmm. so I, okay. Yeah, so I have done some changes, push to task one, then I made another changes, push to uh, task one again. So do I need to wait before task to, I mean, another activity to complete merged with the main branch, then again, do the secondary one? 
So you must work on something at once. Okay. Try, try to avoid working on multiple tasks at, one, tasks at once. No need to rush. No need to run f- faster than you. Tr- no need to tr- in there is no reason to try running faster than you're capable of. Mm-hmm. Okay, so always wait for the main, merge with the main branch, check out again, and then do the task again. Y- y- yes, I'd rather recommend this, but like if you get the topic of this uh, lecture well and grasp it good, you'll be able to like you'll have more flexibility to fix consequences of. Uh, being faster than you would like, uh, than 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 the process, I would say, and fixing some of the of the issues that have been demonstrated that that I've shown. Sure. Okay. okay. Uh, Sanjeev, you have a question. Yeah. So um, you called my name, right? Uh, Sanjay yes. yesterday. Yes. Yeah. So, so, um, so the problem statement is you create just so that I understood this correctly. You have like a main branch. Uh, so the there are several other uh, feature branches with name called task one, task two, task three. So somebody in task three decided that they want to like the the base commit that the previous commit that they want. They are not happy with what they did, so they want to. Uh, make it based on the main branch one of the commits so that's the thing you're trying to uh, resolve here is it i mean task one and task two branches are still uh, no uh, the, the, being... the, this this case is the demonstration of the of the scenario when you forgot to check out main before you start next uh next task Okay. And you create this chain of tasks. So task one has commits uh, related to task one. Task two has commits related, since it's based on task one, not on main. It has also commits from task one and plus commits from task okay, two. Okay. And one by one, like indefinitely. So it kept it's piling like up a ladder. It's like a ladder. Yes, yes. They are piling up on each other like a snow cone. So I think if I demonstrate this, it will be much easier and uh, simpler to understand. So what I'll do is uh, create uh, one more repository and call it uh, Git demo. Actually, very very similar to what we've done during our first task. I'll just create a file and create a commit. So now let me demonstrate you simplified version of the proper way of how we should do, right? Let's say we have we have a new task, git checkout minus b task one. Let's add one more file. Let's add. Oh, 
I made a stupid blunder. Sorry. Um, let me let me restart. I, I'm I'm sorry for that. Um, I forgot to step into the folder and started to initialize the git repository within uh, a folder that contains a lot of other different repositories so i'll i'll simply restart i've stepped i've stepped into this 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 folder and now it should work fine okay give the need So I have created two branches with two commits in them. Let's see in more details how it look how it looks on GitHub. So we have this main branch with readme MD with this single commit, and we have our second branch, task one. And here is what we see one commit ahead of main this means if we go to this branch and if we go to commits over here we'll see that it has initial commit exactly the same that we have in main and right after that here comes our second commit that we've created and if we continue adding commits to this uh, task one branch new commits will continue stacking um I have created one more commit and when I get back we'll see second commit and if we go back to list of our branches, we'll see that it's now two commits ahead. That is exactly what, what I mean. And mm, again, let's compare commits across all our branches. Main has only one, this one, right? So uh, task one has the very initial one that that is also it's it's the same commit they have the same commit hash identical to main and two more right and if i were to create a branch directly from here bypassing main here is what will happen
we get back to our GitHub. So let's refresh. We have our next branch. And what it has? It has commit from main, commit from our first branch, and a commit on top of that that we did directly to this branch. And here is we reproduced exactly this, this change chain of commit. But in fact, what we should see is following. Uh, and let me do some magic. And you will notice the difference immediately. And this magic is called rebase. And the command is very simple, git rebase main. Uh, actually, you know what? Let, let's let's do one more thing before we do this. Let's create a pull request and merge the task one. Create pull request and merge pull request. And when we go to branches, we'll see now that. Task two is also behind because there is this merge commit and one commit ahead. And if we go here and check the commits that it has, it will also have, ha have these two. So what we need to do is rebase. This time, And if we go back here, it will re-record everything and repoint our bases properly so that, again, it is only one commit ahead, just as we intending. Um, and actually, a rebase is allowing us not only to um, change bases of our branches, but also uh, more additional interesting stuff. For example, there was a question about um, how we uh, could squash commits and what exactly squashing means. And let me demonstrate this to you. So let's, let's add some commits. I will add three um, identical commits. And when I run, for example, git log, git log minus five, I can see this. Commit, 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 right? Um, and in fact, we could run git rebase minus i add tilde uh, and the number of commits we want to include into our rebase and it will open very interesting uh, very interesting thing uh, some interactive window where we can edit 
our existing commits. We can get back in history and not only, as I mentioned, change bases, but also edit what we've already created. For example, we can uh, merge our commits within a branch. We can uh, glue them each other into a single commit by using the uh, squash command. We can meld this commit into the previous one. So how, how it works. It, it, this is the text editor. And we can give it, uh, we can change these values. And this will be our comments. Let's save this. Here it will specify a message. Let's save and close. And then we run git log one more time. There is only one commit. And what has happened is like all these changes has been merged into a single one. Uh, it is very convenient and useful when we would like, for example, to, mm, to make our commit history uh, a little more cleaner. Or also, I, alternatively, we can, for example, rebase um, and let's say rename our commit. R means rename. We are saving that. It is saying commit. Now we need to type new commit message. Let's say I am showing how to rename a commit. And when we run git log, we'll see new commit message. What else? What 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 other interesting things? I personally enjoy very much uh, the ability to drop a commit. So if, for example, uh, you decided that the entire last change you don't like it, that you want to revert to the previous commit, you can just write D means drop, which essentially means this commit will go away. You'll delete it. This is how you can uh, revert your changes and like completely wipe out even even things that you've already committed. So and the command is git rebase minus i add and the number of commits to rebase. So this one like take note of it. Uh, very important. Try try to play with this command. Use it uh, for your convenience. Uh, any questions? No questions, everything is clear, or no questions, nothing is clear. Yes, Ramrash. So, yeah, um, I was the one who did that uh, conflict. Um, so um, I was so the reason why uh, it happened, uh, and also I think it it was perfect timing just before the class um, that I've raised one uh, PR request. Um, uh, I was like behind on on homework, so I was doing it like ninety minutes before the class. So I raised one PR, and before waiting for it to be approved and squash and committed, I raised another PR. So yes. I guess that's why. So uh, in my scenario, um, what should I do? I from variables branch, I should rebase. Uh, it yes. So uh, in your case, you could you could create if you want to do two tasks at once, mm -hmm. uh, and don't wait until first is approved before you start working on the next one. You create a branch based on the branch that haven't been approved yet. Mm -hmm. And after it is merged, you will need to rebase your second branch 
from main. Okay. So, so main will become a base for this branch. Okay. So I think my first PR was approved and I was able to merge it, squash merge it. Mm -hmm. um, that, that is a count branch. I think I'm having difficulty with variable branch. Let me try doing git tree base from variables. Um, do a git tree base main mm -hmm. and then try to uh, do commit. Okay, yeah, very good. Uh, nice plan. Uh, yes, Boris? Uh, I'm not sure. I think Christopher was ahead of me. I'm sorry. Anyway. Uh, okay, yeah, Christopher, you had uh, your hand raised for a while. Yeah. Do you have a question? No, no, sorry. I just forgot to take it out. Sorry. Uh, okay. Gotcha. Um, just real quick, are we gonna we're gonna talk about conflicts, merge conflicts, or or is that another day? Yeah, we we still we still have time for today. It's no plan uh, and. Exactly. Next thing that I'm going to show is how we could solve merge conflicts. Actually, I will reproduce the case uh, so you can understand why merge conflicts are happening, and I will demonstrate how to solve them as well. Uh, no, qu no more questions. I, I, I think I saw one more raised hand. Okay. Yeah. Then. Let's move forward. Uh, yeah, Sorry, the, the, the end is from me. Um, I I used to see people do uh, things like um, cherry pick, uh, rebase, and um, now I understand what rebase does. Uh, what of cherry pick? Is this something that can actually be cherry pick? Very good question. Interesting question. Cherry pick. Let me demonstrate it on um, on this diagram as well. So what cherry pick is doing is it taking precisely this commit and copies it into your branch like this. And you'll have single copy of a single commit embedded into your chain of commits. That's what cherry pick is doing. Let me real quick then demonstrate you cherry pick. Um, let's say um, uh, I want to write something meaningful. Um, mm. Okay, so we have our uh, three commits that's not yet in main. One, two, three, right? And let's say we don't want the entire branch. Let's say we want only, only this commit to go into our main. So what we can do? We can take it, its hash, copy it. We can check out our branch. See, only, only, only two commits here, our merge commit and the initial one. And I can say git cherry pick and this commit hash. Mm 
Oh yeah, very cool. And it produced uh, and it produced uh, a conflict for us. Um, so I will quickly solve it myself. And after I'm done with cherry pick, I'll dem I'll separately demonstrate how to solve uh, merge conflicts. And now you can see this commit was written into the same branch, into the main. So we've taken precisely this commit and pulled it into our into our branch or into whatever branch we would like to have. Okay, and now let me demonstrate you how merge conflicts are happening. Um, let's do this. I I will squash everything into no. I'd rather do this. Let me delete this poster and recreate it from scratch, so it will be more cleaner. Um, delete this repository. I want to delete this repository. Ah, oh, come on. Okay, never mind. Let Let's go ahead with this one still. So let's say we have a new file. Uh, okay, okay, where is? color is red into the color dot md it's uh, let's check out and create a new branch let's call this branch red we will add this file to commit it And push. And we will uh, create a pull request. Here it is. It's saying that yeah, we have this we have this file. We will add this file. But that's uh I'm curious why it's two commits. To, yeah, it, it cherry picked this one. Okay, but that's that's not critical. Never mind. Uh, also, what I'll do is I'll pretend there is one more engineer. I'll pretend that there is one more engineer. Each has his own favorite color, color which is green. And he is editing the same file, but first for color is green. And also pushes it to the separate branch. And also creates a separate pull request. So let me open both of them. Uh, so this one says my favorite color is green. 
This one says, my favorite color is red. File is the same. The only difference is color. So the question to the audience, which one will take, will have a priority? Anyone? Okay. So the answer to the question is whoever merges first will be updating the file. So let's say we merge this uh, add color MT, right? This green will go first, let's assume that. And the one who was not that fast will receive a merge conflict. Here it is. It says, branch has conflicts that must be resolved. Uh, the naive approach is to go here, resolve conflicts, and we'll see this ugly thing. So why it is happening? Because Git sees that two persons uh, edited the same file at the same moment and without our intervention, without our, without our input, it is not able to decide which, which color should, should, should be fa favorite one. Basically what, you, what, what this commit, uh, these people should do, what the author of this commit should do is he should communicate with the author of the first version of green and they, both mutually they need to decide what color should we have so we can either manually type and like remove all these system lines and only keep it like this or alternatively we can solve conflicts using our favorite git command which is git rebase so what we need to do, we need to check out main, we need to pull latest commits that we've merged, we need to check out our branch red, and we need to run git rebase main. And it is basically the same thing it is telling us that we have a merge conflict. Uh, a lot of people, especially ones who just starting with Git and starting with rebase, every time they see this merge conflict message when doing rebase, thinking that rebase is not working and dropping everything, don't be like that. Don't be intimidated by this uh, merge conflict. It's not that scary and difficult to resolve and fix. And let me show how to do this. First, we run Git status. And we can see the conflict in file, color.md. Now we can open it in our editor. Let me open it uh, in Visual Studio Code. Um, it provides very good and uh, interesting way of visualizing these uh, conflicts. Uh, <laughs> So Visual Studio Code highlights them as well. And we will see these lines also and some system things like current change, incoming change. And basically we don't have to manually remove these lines. Instead, we can say either accept current change and this means this one will be kept or accept incoming change. This means we'll choose this one, red, or we can accept both changes and then it will just remove these lines. Let's say our favorite color is still green. We can accept current change. We can hit save. We, then we get back here, we adding all each file that we resolved conflicts for and adding more command. 
one more command saying git rebase minus minus continue. It says successfully rebased and updated, and we need to push using the minus minus force option. This is required because we, by doing rebase, we are changing our commits themselves, and they should be like overwritten. And when we get back to the pull request, ah, yeah. This was the only the only change, and by by choosing green, we've chosen that it has like no changes at all, and it automatically closed one. But that's like we should have chosen green. But the overall idea how to solve merge conflicts is that you pulling whatever branch you have conflicts against, you run git rebase and the source branch names you are solving these merge conflicts in your code editor you are adding these files and running git rebase minus minus continue that's how you that's the easiest i would say that's my favorite way of solving merge conflicts any questions yes ahmed Yes, uh, this is actually very sweet. Um, but, but what what I've done before now, which 